So I decided to build an antenna because I was tired of paying for 500 channels that I never watched. And anything I did want to watch, I just streamed. I looked into buying these indoor antennas. And after doing a lot of research, I found that outdoor worked a lot better. I did try this one for a while, but just like all of them, the, the weather kind of beats them up and you end up having to buy one a after a year or two. So I said to myself, why not just build my own? So I searched and I found this website here, this design. And it seemed simple enough. And I ended up building this. And uh, through trial and error, I ended up building about half a dozen of these and uh, perfecting them every time. And I just wanted to show you that I think that this method that I got here is uh, the way to go. So this is the one I have hanging on my roof right now. Works great. I get probably about 100 channels through it. You know, I use just materials that were just laying around. And uh, I just want to show you how I did it. So you're going to want to start with uh, some tools. Here are the tools I used. I'm not going to list them all, but you can see what they are. They're all the basic tools you have laying around. And you don't really need all of these tools. I just happen to have them. So the original plans call for coat hangers for the wires, but I'm using 14 gauge Romex wire. You're going to need at least 60 inches, one, one piece of Romex, 60 inches. That will give you three copper wires at 60 inch length. For the transformer, I ended up buying one at the local AV shop, and it cost me the same amount as buying 10 of them on Amazon. So I recommend you do that. And then for the board, um, because I built so many of these before, and I learned that over the years, the board starts to rot. I ended up using this composite deck board, similar to what you're seeing here. This isn't exactly what I use, but... Um, it's like a no rot board that I ended up ripping down to make it a little smaller. I ended up ripping it to two and three quarters of an inch before I started. So that's what you're going to want to do. And then as far as the length, um, depending on where you're mounting it, it's it's pretty optional. I I recommend at least 20 inches. After you get your board cut, you're just going to want to mark all the locations out of the wire. So between the screws, it's five and a half inches. You're going to need eight screws. And then the last set of screws, they're approximately two and three quarters apart from each other. And then the distance between each screw is uh inch and a half. So if you just pre-drill those holes or mark them, uh, you will be ready to run the wire. And then you're going to want to start by taking two pieces of copper wire at 30 inches long now you have three that are 60 inches but you're going to cut cut one in half or take two and cut them and in this case i use the black and the white and it's all one wire uh, on each side so starting from the top you got to crisscross down to the next set and then straight to the next set of two again straight across and then finally you crisscross back over to the other screws. Yeah, make sure you crisscross. It's important part of the design. It, it helps get the channels. I'm not sure exactly, but um, it's just part of the design. And here's a little closer look of it. And when you crisscross, you want to leave a gap. You don't want the wires to touch. So you can just leave a gap. Um, I chose to leave some insulation on the wire on each side. That gives me a little extra protection if the wires happen to start to sag and want to touch each other, they won't. And if they do, I have the insulation there. So that's why I chose to use the uh, leftover Romex cable I had laying around. Uh, for the ears, each ear is one piece of wire that I cut at uh, approximately 15 inches, 16 inches long. And then I folded it in half and put, screwed it on, wrapped it around the screw, screwed the screw down to tighten it. And then I just trimmed it to seven inches. So you want each one to be seven inches long. And regardless if you get seven inches or not, um, it's not that big of a deal, but you want them all to be the same. And then for the distances between 
you're going to have three inches, two inches between the ears, then three inches, and then two inches again. And I found that when I hang this outside that the wind tends to mess with this a little bit. So you're going to want to have to adjust this occasionally. Sometimes it messes with the reception, but you can adjust it just by bending them back, cleaning the cobwebs off. That's another thing that will cause problems. But um, the weather takes a toll on these things and you just, you kind of just clean them up. But this is probably the better design that I've had out of all the ones I've built. So the original plans call to put the transformer in the center of the board. And I found this to be a problem because the wire is, is the kit coax cable is heavy. So I moved it down to the last set of screws and that seemed to help with the issue that I was having, just the wire being too heavy. So as you see here on my roof, it's, it's hanging down at the bottom. There's no weight in the middle. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Hope this helps you save some money.